everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the NCWA. I'm your host for this week, Mick Karsh, and I am delighted to be here. And I'd like to thank everybody early on for inviting me to take the place again just one time for my good buddy, Big John Lloyd. John is out buying a home tonight, probably a multi-million dollar palatial estate. We have a tremendous program for you, ladies and gentlemen, including... The Mighty Midgets, Lord Littlebrook, and Karate Kid a bit later on. Before we start tonight's program, our sincere condolences for myself and everybody associated with the NCWA. Jenny Alberti, a great wrestling fan and great friend, the mother of NCWA referee Al Alberti, passed away this past week. And again, our condolences to the family and friends of Jenny Alberti. We have a great show tonight. We're going to try to get Big Jim Mitchell out a little bit later on. A lot of surprises for you, but right now, let's take a look at the Mighty Midgets. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a one-fall event scheduled for a 45-minute time limit. Featuring first, to my right, from Liverpool, England, weighing 94 pounds, Lord Littlebrook. His opponent weighing 102 pounds from St. Joseph, Missouri, the Karate Kid. Referee for this match, Al Alberti. Well, Mick Hart, we're going to have a great match right here with the Midgets. Lord Littlebrook taking on the Karate Kid. Johnny, two of the great midget wrestlers in the world. As a matter of fact, you're probably looking at the two midget wrestlers that are booked by more promoters on a worldwide basis than any other two midgets in the business. Not that there's thousands of midget wrestlers, mind you, but these two really are the top of the ladder, and I've got to tell you something about Lord Littlebrook. He has been in professional wrestling, I'm going to be conservative and say 25 years. He has done it all in this business. He has held the midget version of the World's Wrestling Championship. For a time here in the Twin Cities area, he managed the Crusher in the late 1970s when the Crusher was having a feud with Lord Alfred Hayes. He is one of the true characters in this sport. Everybody loves the midgets, particularly the kids. The kids are just, they're enjoying this immensely. That's right, Lord Littlebrook, he's very well put together ring veteran and look at the physique on the karate kid both wrestlers work out tremendously like i mentioned early on referee al alberti will definitely have his hands full during this contest well anybody that has to referee a midget match has my sympathy it's not easy refereeing when you got the heavyweights in there but these midgets now look at lord littlebrook He's biting the fingers of the Karate Kid. Now referee Al Alberti trying to get over in position. And of course, by then, Lord Littlebrook quits biting on the fingers. Now Karate Kid is biting on the cheeks. Oh, look at that. Oh, he is, he is having dinner. He is having dinner. The, oh, my God. Oh, look at this. The Karate Kid was munching a part of the anatomy of Lord Littlebrook, and he did not like <laughs> what he was tasting or what his proboscis was picking up either. Oh, that's my. right. I guess, Mick, that's what you call, uh, maybe you should turn the other cheek on that one. The midget wrestlers, ladies and gentlemen, never, never cease to entertain. This is why they are so much in demand all over the world, any time that the promoters announce that the midgets are on the card, you're guaranteed that the fans are going to turn out, particularly the youngsters. Now, look at this now. There's that full Nelson by the Karate Kid, the bearded Lord Littlebrook out of Liverpool. Well, a little show of... Oh, look at this now. Oh, my word. There's That's not strut. Brothers Beefcake in there. That's Lord Littlebrook. Uh-oh, we're going to have a pose down. Look at Lord Littlebrook posing for the fans. Oh, look at... Oh, he's built. He's put together. There's no doubt about it. Oh, my word. The Mighty Midgets, ladies and gentlemen, part of the NCWA wrestling action tonight. Now, again, that full Nelson by the Karate Kid. Look at this now. Littlebrook says he's got him. It's just a matter of seconds here before he breaks the hold. Now, Let's... 
Lord Littlebrook saying that Karate Kid has the hair and he's pulling on the hair. Wait a minute. Well, again now, a show of strength by the very arrogant Lord Littlebrook. 94 pounds of ego right there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, Mick, his weight is 94 pounds, but however, I think his ego has got to be uh, 294 pounds. No doubt about it. Look at this now. He, he's beckoning the Karate Kid to do it again. Well, you don't often see a wrestler actually asking an opponent to clamp a hold on one more time. Maybe he's trying to psych out the younger Karate Kid right here. Wait a minute now. This time, the kid may have it locked on in such a way that Littlebrook is, wait a second, whips. Oh! Littlebrook head over heels. Well, that certainly did not work out the way Lord Littlebrook wanted it to. Over the top. Oh, oh. stepped on the hand oh. of Lord Littlebrook. Ouch. Man. Wow. Now Lord Littlebrook showing his hand to referee Al Alberti. I'm not sure that Al really cares, to be honest with you. I was just going to mention that, Mick. Uh, Al really doesn't care about what happens in the ring. He's just trying to maintain law and order the best he can. Oh, look at the face on Lord Littlebrook. If we can get a, a tight shot of that man, you've got 30 or 40 years of professional wrestling carved on that man's head. He has, he has done it all. The scars are there. And quite honestly, this is a man who has wrestled all over the world. He is known in Japan. He's known in Australia. He's known, of course, in his native England, up into Canada, Hawaii, everywhere, that there are professional wrestling fans who follow this business closely. They know the name of Lord Littlebrook. Nick, I gotta be honest with you, watching this match, not only am I impressed with the, the wrestling abilities of Lord Littlebrook, but also those of the Karate oh, Kid. absolutely. You know, he's taken some punishment so far, but he's come right back. The Karate Kid from St. Joseph, Missouri, as he takes on Lord Littlebrook, who hails from Liverpool, England. Well, certainly we do not want to want for one minute suggest that the midget wrestlers are not every bit as tough as their heavyweight counterparts. Absolutely not. Pound for pound, the midgets give it 150% when they're in the ring. They are competitive. They are great athletes. Don't let the size deceive you. Not for a minute. The Karate Kid you mentioned, John, from St. Joseph, Missouri, that brings to mind, very briefly, you'd like to mention the passing of one of the great professional wrestlers of the past several years, our good friend DJ Peterson, formerly one half of the AWA World Tag Team Champions, tragically killed in a motorcycle accident down in Missouri. Certainly our condolences and our prayers with the family and friends of DJ Peterson. Well, D.J. Peterson, one half of oh. the former AWA Tag Team Champions, as you mentioned, with Big Scott Hall. D.J. Peterson, uh, definitely quite a force in the squared circle. And as you mentioned, Mick, we are definitely sad to hear that. The Karate Kid takes the offense. Did he get, oh, wait a minute, Alberti appeared to stop in mid-count there. I thought he had him. Maybe he stuttered, Mick, I don't know. The Mel Tillis of professional wrestling referees. <laughs> Al Ep Birdie. <laughs> oh, oh, let's not pick on Al. He's a good referee. He does the best he can. Not looking at Karate Kid firing away, hammering on the head of Lord Littlebrook. Now that Karate Kid is put together, make no mistake. A tremendous athlete. Oh, Alberti's getting frustrated now. He's trying to disengage Lord Littlebrook from the ropes. And the Karate Kid did not allow that to happen. Now he finally backs to a neutral corner as Alberti very slowly untangles. Oh, look at this now. Oh, my heavens. Lord Littlebrook looks like he just got off of a horse. Looks like he went horseback riding for 10 hours without a saddle. Man, he's in some definite pain. Oh, nice roll-up. What a maneuver there. Scissors. Oh, come on, Alberti, for heaven's sakes. I don't know what, I, I, maybe it's our camera angle here, John, but I, what is, I guess finally, we've got the pin. It certainly appeared to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest, the Karate That kid. the Karate Kid had Lord Littlebrook flat to the canvas there several times, but maybe it's our angle. I, 
Alberti in the ring probably had a better vantage point than you and I do. Well, exactly, Mick. Uh, you know, I was taking a look at referee Al Alberti. Let's see exactly what he saw, fans. Let's go to a replay and see the pin right here. Let's take a look, everybody, and see if we do, in fact, have that replay of the closing moments. Look at this maneuver, a great roll-up. Now, I, I swear the man is down. Now, Alberti is really not in position at this point. He is to the side of where the pinfall is being recorded here. Well, at first, Mick, I could see that Lord Littlebrook was kind of moving forward on his shoulders. There was space between his shoulders and the mat. That must be what referee Al Alberti saw. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, the Karate Kid gets the victory. Outstanding midget match with the NCWA. Stay with us, everybody. We're coming back from Fridley 49er Days with the stars of the NCWA. Buckley and O'Neill together, how come? I'm here to elucidate the prodigious benefits of space technology, and you? To bring what you say down to Earth. Take this laser developed for space research. It may one day supplant the need for coronary bypass surgery. It could obliterate an artery obstruction in minutes. The patient's up and around the same day. I'm speechless. See? The benefits from space are endless. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. What's wrong, Vince? My woman's done left me. My dog ran away. And people still aren't wearing their safety belts. Ah, oh, Vince, you singing those buckle up blues again? Some people don't wear their seatbelts. I can't believe it's true. Those kind of people get knocked right out of their shoes. So buckle up, baby. Don't sing me those buckle up blues. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. I mean it, baby. Buckle, honey, suckle, buckle, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the debut edition of Wrestling Flashback with Slick Mick. And we have chosen, ladies and gentlemen, one of the great veterans in professional wrestling to kick this segment off. Each and every week we'll be taking a look back at some of the great legends in professional wrestling, some of whom have retired, some of whom, like my guest Chris Markoff, are still very much actively competing. Chris, welcome to the segment, first of all. And what I'd like to talk about tonight, Chris, is your initial appearances in the Twin Cities going back to the 1960s. Some phenomenal feuds with the likes of the Crusher. Let me tell you, the people right here in Twin City, they know you don't have to introduce me, Chris Markov, because in 66, I bury Crusher, Bruiser, Doug Gilbert, Anybody, anytime, and the people that knew who is all the time with the victory, Chris Markov, the Russian. Now, you listen to me, because I know Russian is talk. Everybody listen. Now, I'm not retired. Still, I love it to beat one by one all the American wrestlers. Now, I get up my dear partner, the Sheik, and you, American wrestlers, if you get it guts again, put it at boots, get in in that circle, and I'll show you, me and my dear partner, what can I do, because I love it to beat you, to cripple you, and the people right here in Twin City, they know, they remember, they used to bring in my Russian flag, they used to get up and give me salute. They used to say, Markov, you're the greatest. The Russians, the greatest. And still, the Russians is the greatest. The Russian, they can beat anybody, anytime. So you look at right now, the greatest, the best wrestler in the world for all time. All right, Chris Markov. First of all, before we talk about some of the comments you just made about the fans standing up and saluting, I'd like to go back in time to the 1960s and talk to you about some of the opponents from that back then. You mentioned the Crusher, one of the great names in the history of wrestling. The two of you tore apart the Twin Cities. That's right. And I bet Crusher so many times. And I beat him so bad. And he's going in his knees. He said, Chris, please. I cannot take it anymore. Let me go. And I was glad. Just pin him right there. And on one, two, three. And I, you know, you know that. 
Well, perhaps we were looking at things a little bit differently, Chris. Let's talk about another wrestler from that era, another one of the greats with whom you had several, several matches, not only in the Twin Cities, but throughout the upper Midwest. The mighty Igor, another great that comes to mind. Listen, I wrestled in Europe. I was European champion. I beat everybody in Europe. I wrestled in Japan. I was Japanese champion. I wrestled in uh, Australia, and I was the best. Now, you're talking about Igor, the little Polak, dummy, oh. goofy, nothing he can do about it, and I beat him so many times, and you know that. The people that know, put him back now if they have a guts against me again, and I'll show you. I'll beat him again. All right, all right. Before you go, Chris Markoff, again, I don't remember the feud with the mighty Igor quite the same way you do. I'd like to make reference to something you said a little bit earlier on about how whenever you appeared in the arenas here in the Twin Cities throughout the state of Minnesota, that the fans would get up and salute the Russian flag. Now, I'm sorry, Chris Markoff. Number one, I don't recall that ever happening. Secondly, has nobody told you detente, glasnost, there's tremendous relations... Listen to me, you shut up and you listen now. You get a short memories. You don't remember I beat Igor so many times. You don't remember I beat Krasha so many times. You get a pictures right now. Show to the people that pictures and Krasha is bleeding, and it's his knees. And the front of me is begging me for mercy. Now, you know who's the best. It's still the best, the Russian. It's nobody else. Don't give me that. All right, well, well I, ladies and gentlemen, I see the look in this man's eyes, and I've seen it since the 1960s. When he starts to get fired up, all you got to do is mention Americans to Chris Markov, and after all these years, it's the same response, glasnost or not. Our guest has been still a very angry Russian assassin, the debut of wrestling flashback, Chris Markov. Tell him that people know. Tell him that Russia's still the best. And Russian will be the best, and they're ready. They're ready to thank you, thank you, Chris Mark. That gold medal, anytime, anytime. There are two ways to build a body: this way and this way. Anabolic steroids, another drug that can kill. The Minnesota Medical Association and the Minnesota Nurses Association. Partners in care because we care. Look at this, we got a foot race now. The track shoes are on. Well, well very smart. <laughs> I'll saw who won that one. Very smart move by TJ Lightning. He baited the hitman. That comes from being around as a veteran for longer and knows when to get in and when to get out. Oh, he's given me gifts I don't want. Make it acknowledge. Oh, great oh. snap suplex. Oh, look at this now. I, I saw him when he hit that, his back was crunched. Absolutely. Now this, Jim, this to me is pure stupidity. He's got a man ready to be had in a compromising position, and he's got to take issue with the crowd. The ego gets the better of this guy time and time again. Well, it just goes again where he puts out more punishment, and I'll tell you what, he's going to lose this if he keeps this kind of attitude up, because this young kid out here, he's good, and you just can't do the same stuff to a young kid like this. Nick Karsh, along with Commissioner Jim Mitchell here from Shakopee Senior High School and the NCAA, Right, head first into that top turnbuckle. As our friend Big Mike said, the man with the Paul E. Dangerously hairline. <laughs> oh, big clothesline right across oh the nose. See what I was just telling you before? Don't give this kid an edge and he'll take it over right there. Very, very impressive young star. He might be small. He might be a little uh, skinny yet, but he's tall. Oh, rock kick right to the midsection. Oh, hello. Big leg drop, right to the back of the neck. Say goodnight now, here it goes. What is this? Oh, oh, oh this is it. Oh, an excruciating hole, Jim. Look at this young kid. He is showing me a lot out here. Jim, we're waiting for the signal for the bell. 
Oh, I, I thought we had oh, a submission. Jim, I've got to commend you. I look at this lineup tonight, that tag team championship bout, and then the claw master. Turn once on again. Again, oh, look at this. The heavyweight champion of the NCAA, the mass professor, with Carmine Barana Jr. as his manager. In my opinion, Jim, the most impressive masked man in professional wrestling today. Yeah, I think he is too right now. Uh, he's been around for a while, and, and he's going up. I, I see him going to the other big organizations. Uh, he's had a couple contract offers, and we're just waiting to see if we're going to lose him. And, of course, he's got that, uh, that fungus that he carries around with him. <laughs> Look at a great maneuver. Look at this, and the bridge. What a bridge that was, was it? A backward bridge. This has been a seesaw battle right from the opening bell. Oh, thrilled him. Oh, man. Head first onto the floor here at the senior high school. I don't know if this kid can get back up after that. Oh, now Lightning follows him outside the ring, Jim. I don't like to see this. Oh. Right out of the ring, April. Jeez. Come on, Tyson. Get him back in the ring. Now, you know, as you sit here, Commissioner, you've mellowed in your old age. Once in a while during your wrestling career, you broke a rule or two. Never broke a rule. Oh, Jim. May have stretched a little bit, never broke. <laughs> I've been known to stretch it. Oh, you're something yeah, all right. You're something all right. Oh, boy. I got news for you. This kid's going to clean his spot. Look at this great double leg sweep by the hitman. Now, oh. He's going to try to wrap him up in that Indian death lock, Jim, there if he can take him over the top. There it is. He's got him. all. Oh. It's all over. Come on, Bruce. Bring that bell. That reverse Indian death lock. I got my hand on the bell. I'm ready to roll here, waiting for the signal from referee Kreisman. Oh, he ain't going to make it. He's not going to make it. He lets go. Well, apparently, apparently he felt that perhaps he did not have it since on as well as he should. And now, wait a minute, Lightning, this could be a very, very serious mistake. He's taking too much time, Jim. Way too much time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look at him. Uh-huh. Halfway across the ring from uh -huh. eight feet in the air. Uh -huh. Irish whipped across the ring into the turnbuckle. Boy, give these two young stars credit. They have done that. Now, look at that young guy. He's going to climb up the top of the rope. Another mistake. I'm not sure he... I, well, let's see if he's in a compromised position. I don't oh, know. Oh, 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 he did nail him. I think in that instance... Kind of, no, 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 no. I think in that instance, Lightning may have been a little bit too far to the other side of the ring. But again, Jim, that's the experience factor. Yep. He was off balance up there. You can see that all yep, along. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, right to the head. Oh, now it's a flood fest. Scientific wrestling has gone out the window. Oh, he's, got, he's got him rolled up. Two, three. Oh, wait a minute. No, two and a half. Two and a half. Oh. I have three out there. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting yelled at. Oh, that's right, but I'll tell you. I guess that comes back to my old days of refereeing, too. Absolutely it does. At the St. Paul Civic Center. Many, many days ago. Beautiful oh. underhook, double arm suplex. And now again, look at this guy, Jim. The height of conceit. Every time he does look something positive. Oh, oh, please. You're not going to get the hit uh, man that way. Can you give me that roll over backwards and just try to pin him? Oh. Well, it's going to cost him. It's that simple. It's got to catch up with him. Oh, he spit on him, Jim. What a classless individual this, this guy young is. This kid, I'm telling you, he's sticking right in there. I think he's going to take it. I just, I, I think this other J. Lightning is just being too cocky. Oh, he telegraphed that one, Jim. There it he is. There it is. Western Come Union on. that time. Come right, on, guy. J.J., give it to him. You got to be unbiased here. <laughs> Try to be unbiased, Jimbo. Oh, oh right beautiful drop kick. That's got to do it. He's got to want two. We have one minute to time limit, ladies and gentlemen. One minute left. If somebody can sustain an offense here, oh no, great Frankenstein! Oh no, and a beauty. This could do it. Kind of one, two. He's got him. Oh, 
if this kid had some weight on him, that'd have been all over. Two and a half. It sounds like me, two and a half. <laughs> Wait a minute now. There it is, it's all over. Big power bomb. That's gotta do it, you gotta do it. One. Oh man, that was a clear two. Yet another near fall. 30 seconds to time limit. Both of these wrestlers have given it their all for 14 and a half minutes. What a match this is. It's a main event anyway. There's a block. There's a block by the hitman trying to that suplex. Uh -oh. Look at that reversal. Turn one, two, three. They're not going to make it, Jim. No. Time ran out. Oh my goodness, what a match this was. What a match. I, I tell you what, I thought JJ had the match. Well, certainly, with another few seconds, he very well may have had that one in the bag. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the future of professional wrestling. Two great young stars. TJ Light, wait a minute, Hitman's oh, not done. Yes. I believe is going to be the hasty retreat back to the locker room. I think he's very happy to get out of Dodge right now. I don't think anybody here is going away unhappy with this match because it was a heck of a match. These two young men put on a barn burner for you right here. That's this little chair. Oh, this guy's nuts. Let me tell you, the first time we got together, you smashed the trophy over my head. The second time, you cheated to get a 15-minute drop. This is the third time, you and me, brother, there isn't going to be a fourth. Let's do it. Tell you what, J.B. Trapp, we've gone back and forth many times in the squared circle, but I'm not taking you lightly for one minute at all. You're a tough opponent, but superior male, I don't think so. So enough talking, let's go get it done right now. Once again, my personal thanks to everybody involved with the NCWA for inviting me on this week. I wasn't doing anything. I was sitting at home. Finally, finally they called up and said, Slick Mick, come on down and help us out, and I am glad to be here. Congratulations to the NCWA, an outstanding promotion. It has been a great night. Once again, Big John Lloyd. John, I'm not trying to take your spot, pal. You're a lot bigger than I am. I am out of here, everybody. Don't forget to watch Slick Mick's Body Slam review each and every week. For all of us and the NCWA, body slams and pitfalls to you and yours. We will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.